Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison E.M. And today we are looking at Histology Practical Lab number 10, which is NEV tissue. Okay, so let's get into this lesson and look at our objectives. Number one, to describe the general structures of a neuron, to classify neurons and give an example of each type, to describe the features of of the cell body soma are seen under the light compound microscope and the electron microscopes to describe the microscopic structure of peripheral nerves to describe the histological structures of the autonomic and sensory nervous system to describe the neuromuscular junction and to identify the various stains that are used for nerve tissue all right so now let's get into this and look at the histological features of a peripheral nerve peripheral nerve we're going to look at the transverse and the longitudinal section of a sciatic nerve so here you examine the sciatic nerve at low power and or at medium power you study the drawing of the organization of the peripheral nerve into fiber bundle of fasciculi separated by delicate vascular connective tissue so this is very important you identify the epineurium the perineurium and you also identify the endoneurium in the fascicular and then at high power you identify the axons which are each enclosed in a neuri lemma sheath okay so now let's look at the histological diagrams so now this is on the right on the right here you have your longitudinal sec your cross section so this is a cross section and then this is a longitudinal section here on the left side okay so as you can see this is a nerve bundle this connective tissue that is enclosing the nerve bundle this is what we call the epimysium epineurium so this is the epineurium and then you've got a nerve fascicle here this nerve fascicle is covered by this connective tissue that is called the perineurium perineurium at high power you're going to see that in in the nerve fascicle they're going to be individual nerve fibers in here those are covered by what we call the endoneurium so that's where the difference is what you see here this is just connective tissue proper and these are deposites that are white so this is just connective tissue that makes up the the air the epineurium so in the connective tissue for the epineurium, that's where you find blood vessels that will go and supply the nerves. So this is a cross section, this side. On this side, this is a longitudinal section. So on the longitudinal sections, you are able to see these nerve fibers that are running like this longitudinally. So you make a drawing both in the cross section at low power and even in the longitudinal section at low power. What you see here, these are just nucleus of the of the nerves. All right, so this is at low power. Let's look at it at high power. Okay. So this is the the longitudinal section. This is a longitudinal section at high power for the nerve. Why is it the longitudinal section? Because look at the axons. They're running like this in this direction. This is an axon. This is an axon. Okay. So this one that is covering the entire nerve fascicle is the perineurium. And then this one here that is covering the individual nerve fiber. Because this is a nerve fiber here. This is a nerve fiber. This is a nerve fiber. 
the connective tissue that is surrounding the nerve fiber is the endoneurium and you actually find fibroblasts in the connective tissue because we know that the principal cells for the connective tissue are fibroblasts so this nucleus that you find here this is a fibroblast here okay. now as the axons are running you have these ones here this is what we call the nodes of Landia the nodes of Landia are spaces in the myelinated axons where there, there are no swan shells there's no myelin sheath so you can see here this there's myelin sheath here there's myelin sheath here now this region here where there's no myelin sheath that's what we call that's what we call the nodes of Landia okay so this is an axon here this is also an axon an axon okay. these are myelinated and where there is no myelin, that's where nodes of lambda are. So to prove that these are myelinated by swan shells because this is the peripheral nervous system, there is a nucleus here for the swan shells. So the, it shows you that these axons are covered by myelin from swan cells. This is a nucleus for swan cells here. Alright, so draw this at high power in the longitudinal section. Should also draw it in the cross section or in the transverse section. So this is the cross section at high power. So in the cross section you see this is the the endoneurium that is surrounding the axon. So this one here this whole thing here this is the axon okay and this what is surrounding it is the the endoneurium okay. now this axon is covered by schwann cells how are you able to tell because here this is a nucleus for the schwann cell meaning that the membrane for the swan shell is surrounding this axon here okay. surrounding this axon all right so now this connective tissue that is surrounding a fascicle which is just a collection of uh, individual nail fibers this is the the perineurium so in draw the perineurium like this and then include all these individual nail fibers inside labeling even the endoneurium show the nucleus for the Schwann cells so draw this at draw this at high power when you're drawing the when you're drawing the and the perineurium don't forget to include the fibroblast as well because you know this is connective tissue and the principal cell for the connective tissue is the fibroblast all right so that was demonstration of the sciatic nerve okay now here is a sciatic nerve as well, but this has been stained using silver stain. The reason why they use silver stain here is to observe. So here they use silver stain to demonstrate myelin. Okay, to demonstrate myelin, the myelin sheath. So here our main focus our main focus is the myelin sheath this is at low power okay. so this whole thing here this whole structure this structure here is a sciatic nerve okay. and in the sciatic nerve you have got these small circles here those are myelin sheath that are surrounding the axons but the beauty about this is that the axons are not shown the silver stain can only demonstrate the myelin sheath that are surrounding the axons. So draw this at high at low power and also draw it at high power. So this is uh this is the transverse section, the cross section. Okay. So this is the cross section at low power. So what you see here, this is the myelin sheath. You can see that there's a space inside here. The space is supposed to be a space where the axon is supposed to be. But the axon is not stained but the silver stain. So it remains empty. It remains empty. 
So this one here, that one there is the the connective tissue that surrounds the nerve, which is the epimysium. Okay. The ep epineurium, rather. This is the epineurium. Okay, epineurium. This is the epineurium. And these ones here are the myelin sheath. So draw it at low power. So this is the longitudinal section. This is the longitudinal, this is the, this is the transverse section rather at high power. This is the longitudinal section at low power. Do not draw this, just observe. Okay. So for this one, you just observe. At low power, you just observe. At high power, that's where you draw. So this is high power. The high power here is demonstrating this here, an empty space. This is just myelin sheath. The axon is supposed to be here, but the silver stain does not demonstrate the axon. So just draw the myelin sheath like this and label that this is the myelin sheath. Always remember that the stain that is used to stain the myelin sheath is a silver stain. So draw this, which is a longitudinal section for the myelin sheath of the sciatic nerve. All right, let's move on and let's look at the histological features of a sensory ganglia. Sensory ganglia. So here you identify the pseudo unipolar pseudo unipolar ganglion cells with nisi substance in the cytoplasm and their surrounding satellite cells. So this is very important. Very, very important. So you just observe this. This is low power. Okay. So you just observe it at low power. So observe. So observe at low power. And then this is medium power here. This is medium power. And then this is high power. So at high power, that's where I want you to draw. So at high power, you pick cells that you're going to draw. So this is a cell. And then you've got the nucleus. On the center, you have the nucleolus. And then what you see here, these are the Nisi bodies. And around this cell, you find small nucleus that are surrounding the cells. Those are satellite cells. So this is how you draw. So this is the nucleolus. Okay. Those are Nisi bodies. Nisi bodies. The whole thing is what we call a ganglion. Sensory ganglion. And the cells that are surrounding it are satellite cells. These are satellite cells. So draw two to three cells like that. And also draw these. These are axonal fibers. So draw the axonal fibers as well. Close to these bodies. So draw the axonal fibers. And label them. These are nerve fibers. So that's how you draw the, the trigeminal ganglion, the sensory ganglion. Let's look at the histological features for an autonomic ganglion. So an autonomic ganglion, you find the cell is multipolar. Multipolar, satellite cells are fewer. Okay. So you draw at high power. You only select two or three cells. Okay. So this is a low power and medium power. Here you just observe. Just observe here. And then at high power, that's where you draw. So now this is your cell body. And then it has your nucleus here. It has satellite cells as well. Satellite cells. And it has your Nisi bodies inside here. And then it is multipolar. So it has a lot of processes. And then these that you see here, those are the nerve fibers. The axonal processes, so you draw them at, as well. So you draw this shell here, 
you draw another cell here you see there's this process here this process here that's why we say it is multipolar you also draw this cell here so you draw two to three cells and they are accompanying are they accompanying uh, axonal fibers so here on the cells that you draw you label so draw at high power you label uh, so you label the nucleolus you label the missy bodies you label the satellite cells the multiple processes that are coming from the cell body okay. so the multiple processes from the cell body cell body and then you also draw the axonal processes the axonal processes that's what you are drawing on this autonomic ganglia so this one you only draw at high power all right let's move on to the histological features of a multipolar neuron so the multipolar neuron is demonstrated in slide H4, which is uh, the spinal cord. So multipolar neurons mostly are found in the central nervous system, which is the spinal cord and the brain. So this is at low power. You just observe here. Okay. So just observe at low power. And then draw at high power. So at high power, you're able to see this cell here. So this cell has got this process here, it has another process here, and then it has a nucleus. So you can see this is process 1, process 2, process 3. Because it has more than two processes, it is termed as multipolar neuron. So this is the multipolar neuron. So you can just say these two are dendrites. dendrite and then this here is an axon so you draw that and you label it like that okay so this one here that is the nucleus all right and this is the cytoplasm so you draw that and you label let's mo move on now to the peripheral nerves and the autonomic nerves and we're going to look at it in the tongue and in the colon. Okay, so now let's look at the peripheral nerves. This side here, this is the colon. All right. So this is the colon here. And then this is the tongue. So demonstrate the peripheral nerves in the tongue and in the in the colon, which are the autonomic nerves. So in the tongue, these are muscle fibers. So this is the muscle fiber here. Muscle fiber. Okay, and then this is a gland. So this is the lingua gland. The nerves are not uh, readily demonstrated. So the nerves are not readily demonstrated. What you say, this one here is the peripheral nerves. Peripheral nerve. So you label it like that. Those are peripheral nerves. They are found very close to muscles. This one here is the blood vessel. Okay. So that one there is the blood. This so that one there is the blood vessel. So you draw this entire slide and you demonstrate these structures. On the colon, this part here, this part here is the is the autonomic nervous system. 
So this is the autonomic the autonomic nerve. What you can see here, these are longitudinal muscle fibers. Longitudinal muscle fibers. And what you see here, these are transverse or cross-section muscle fibers. muscle fibers and you know that the type of muscles that are found in the colon are smooth muscles so this is autonomic nervous nerve nerve ganglion nerve ganglia so this is where these ones here are your cell bodies so those are the cell bodies that are in the ganglia cell bodies those are the cell bodies for the ganglia so I thought it would be to be very important for me to label this structure because it's not very clear. So that's the orientation for the colon. All right, now the last part, let's look at the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction is the junction where the nerve and the muscle meet. So you draw this at low power only. So you use this. Okay. You use this. So now this is your muscle fibers. These are your muscle fibers here. Muscle fibers, muscle fibers. And then these muscle fibers are innervated by these nerves. So this is a nerve here. This is a nerve. So these nerves are going to the muscle fibers. This is what we call a motor end plate. So a motor end plate is where the nerve is innervating the muscle fiber. When you have one nerve giving branches to a lot of uh, muscle fibers that is what we call a motor unit so look at the motor unit define it because it is very very important all right so you draw this at low power only this was the last histological slides that we were looking at in this presentation and then the next thing you have is an exercise saying what is the nisi substance in the cell bodies list the three types of astrocytes and their functions with all label diagrams, classify neurons according to their shape. Give examples of structures in the body where each type exists. What is neuroplasticity? And can peripheral nerves regenerate? And then you explain this. Thank you very much. If you want to register for lessons, you can reach us on WhatsApp on plus 2609754977. Okay, what's up? There we offer lessons, online lessons, and physical lessons in all courses. In all courses. All right. Join us in our next video. Until we see you, study hard, study smart.